Hello everyone and welcome to Fifth North. I'm Demir and today we're checking out the Manfrotto Pro-Lite Backloader S Backpack. All right, so first of all, I just wanna say thank you for stopping by and check out the channel if you're brand new. Uh, if you're a repeat viewer, definitely thank you for coming back. Um, but regardless of how long you've been here, definitely make sure you hit that like button, make sure you hit that subscribe button, it does help me out quite a bit. All right, so with that being said, let's talk about the backpack itself. It's called the Backloader S for two reasons. One, obviously the backloader part, the gear is loaded into the back side of the backpack. And then the S part stands for small. There's two versions of this backpack. There's the S, the small, and the M, the medium. But don't let the small part fool you. It's not a tiny backpack. Uh, I would say it's kind of like a middle of the ground backpack, a perfect size for everyday use. All right, so let's head back to the studio and I'm gonna show you guys a couple of features that I really like about this backpack. All right, so if you saw my video where I reviewed the uh, Peter McKinnon Nomadic backpack, um, you might remember me saying that that camera bag was the last camera bag that I would ever need. Well, I was wrong. So the reality of it is I love my Peter McKinnon bag, but there's one major flaw with it. It is quite large. Don't get me wrong, it does a great job for when I'm traveling. Um, I have enough space to fit all my camera gear and personal items for a nice two to three day trip. But when it comes to everyday use, it is quite large and quite heavy. Check out this quick comparison. If you look at the Manfrotto ProLite, uh, backloader S backpack, you can see that it's uh, 3.66 pounds when empty. Uh, this is compared to the Peter McKinnon bag being at 5.75, so that's a little bit more than a two pound difference, which doesn't sound like a lot, but when you think about it, when you're carrying gear all day long, every little bit is gonna add up. Outside of that, when you look at capacity, uh, the Manfrotto's got a 19 liter capacity, whereas the Peter McKinnon bag is 35 liters and can be expanded up to 42, so clearly a difference in what these bags were designed to do. Um, and lastly, you can see the dimensions, uh, a decent amount of size difference between the two bags, especially when the Peter McKinnon bag is expanded to that 42 liter size. The reality is Peter McKinnon and Nomadic did come out with an everyday backpack to fix the problem of the other backpack being too large and heavy, but I decided to go this route instead, and here's why. Now, don't get me wrong, I definitely love my Peter McKinnon Nomadic bag. That's without question. In fact, if you wanna see my review on that bag, go ahead and click right here to see that video, but the everyday bag they released is definitely overpriced in my opinion. Uh, the price on it would be $277 if I got it customized the way that I needed it to be for my everyday use. On the flip side, the ProLite Backloader S bag ended up being $179, plus on top of that, I got an additional student discount, making it over $150 cheaper than the Nomadic version. So definitely there is a big savings, and this bag does everything I needed to do and then some. The other issue with the Peter McKinnon Everyday Bag is that it's actually still quite a bit bigger than the Backloader S. The Peter McKinnon Everyday Bag is 25 liters versus the Backloader S being at 19. So still, it would not quite meet the needs of being a very small, compact bag, which is what I'm looking for. Anyway, enough about what I didn't get. Let me show you what I did get and how I customized it to fit my needs. As you can see, I fit quite a lot of gear in here. Um, I've got my Sony a7R4 with a uh, 24 to 70 uh, f2.8 G Master attached to it. I've also got my 70 to 200 f2.8 G Master, uh, two battery banks, my DJI Mini 2 drone, a three uh, battery setup for the drone, the drone's controller, two separate uh, wall power pucks, and the charger for the Sony battery. Now you'll notice how I've got it divided right now. You can make the entire section all camera gear, um, but I've instead chosen to go 70% camera gear and then 30% for this pocket right here. Let's flip over and I'll show you what the pocket looks like. So that 30% that I was talking about is actually up here in this pocket. If I open it up, you can take a look and um, you can use this part for personal gear uh, or like in my case, I actually use it for additional camera gear that doesn't quite fit uh, very well in the other compartment. So for example, I've got my camera strap. I've also got things like, you know, battery pack, uh, pouches that hold you know a couple of batteries or maybe like a lens hit or something like that um, but you can definitely choose you know what you want to use it for and it's it's really good like I said for either personal um, or other camera equipment on the opening flat piece uh, you've got a zipper pocket which is mesh which can hold all of your cables you know charging data transfer all that kind of stuff and then right above it you have two other compartments that are mesh that are not zipper they're just kind of like a flap and they're perfect for holding my uh, variable ND filters above that you've got this velcro strap which opens and inside there, you can actually fit your uh, laptop. Uh, I believe it'll take up to a 15 inch laptop, so plenty of space there. 
and then overall this this whole piece is padded so it'll keep everything protected as far as covering up the camera gear as well. Let's go ahead and take a look at the outside of the Backloader S. I really like the finish of the bag. It's, it's very subtle and not too, hey, look at me, I'm a camera bag, but still looks nice and, and uh, modern. A couple of nice features here. You have the hooks on the bottom. You can either do a strap or you can attach things like the rain cover. This is a combo rain slash sun cover that it comes with that I attach here at the bottom. And then in the top part here, you have another zipper, which gives you another compartment where you can put things like um, I've got a notebook here, a pen, some microfiber cloths, and it goes all the way down underneath so you can actually fit a couple more things down there. If you zip that up and you look at the side of the bag, the thing I like about this bag on the sides is uh, there is actually no side access, which in my opinion side access is pretty useless because it's never quite the right shape, size, um, or fit to get your cam camera gear out comfortably. So I like having the um, no side access, that way you get more features on the sides. So for example, on both sides of the bag, you've got a magnetic um, slash uh, stretchy material, not really spandex, but a stretchy material that opens up to let you put a water bottle or a tripod. If you do uh, use a tripod, for example, you do get the strap up top to keep it more secure and from tipping over. So essentially with having two sides that are exactly the same, you can carry two separate tripods or two separate water bottles or one of each. Either way, you're good to go. Um, up from the strap, you've got another little compartment it's a little pocket that actually hides a, let me get it out here, there we go. It actually hides a TSA compatible lock and every single zipper on the bag has these metal, uh, metal wires on them and they actually will all come to the end here and you can clip them into the lock and keep your camera bag more secure. So really nice feature there and it tucks away quite nicely if you don't want to use it. From there, if we go back to the top of the bag, you've got a nice grab handle, a little uh, hanging hook, and then if you go to the other side, you have exactly what I was talking about, which is another uh, water bottle slash tripod holder. Uh, I love the bottom of the bag. If you look at it, it has these very deep ridges that actually stick out. They're pretty thick, about the thickness of my finger. And uh, they're very heavily padded, so it'll keep the bag um, stable when it's sitting up. But it'll also keep the bottom of the bag padded to keep your gear from getting damaged. All right, so last but not least, let's look at the back of the bag. So the back of the bag I really like for a couple of reasons. One, the straps are very padded and they're thick enough to be comfortable, but not too thick where you can't use a uh, Peak Design Capture. I love the Peak Design Capture and I've had a couple of backpacks that I've tried that actually can't fit it. And if it doesn't fit the capture, I don't want it as my camera bag. So I love the fact that it's big enough to be padded and soft, but small enough to work. You also get a chest strap right here to clip yourself, uh, make it a little more comfortable. And then on the inside here, you have this, uh, it's kind of like a mesh material with a large ridge. So you've got basically two padded parts here and here, and then a ridge down the middle that actually allows airflow to go um, up against your back, keeping you from getting too sweaty when you're maybe hiking or doing a lot of activity while wearing the backpack. Also on the other side here, you have, actually it's on this side, you've got a handle. This handle is good for grabbing the bag from the side, or if you have a roller suitcase and you wanna put this bag on top, you can slide the uh, handle through there to keep the bag from falling off of the roller suitcase. So as you can see overall, the build quality is really good. Uh, it's a good looking backpack, it's a light backpack, and uh, I just really like the fit and finish of it overall. At this point, I've owned the Manfrotto Pro Light Backloader S backpack for a little bit over a month, and I do have to say that I'm extremely happy with it. Um, it has hit every point of need when it comes to an everyday backpack, from the customization of being able to do 100% camera gear or a 30-70 split, from the build quality, the size and the weight, there's really no room to complain. If you're looking for a bag to meet that everyday uh, use case, this is a perfect example and I would highly recommend it. I would definitely buy it again 10 out of 10 times. With that being said though, if you do like this video, I definitely do appreciate it if you hit that like button for me. And if you haven't already, hit the subscribe button and the notification bell, that way you know my next video comes out. I hope you all have a great night and I'll catch you in the next video. Peace. <laughs>